Hello fellow travelers, I'm Jeb Brooks with greenergrass.com. Thanks for taking a minute to watch this video. Welcome to the second episode of the low cost carrier comparison. Right now I'm in Austin, Texas, thanks to Allegiant uh, who brought me in. If you haven't checked out that video, please do. And I've been keeping it weird here in Austin, which is the city motto uh, for a little while. Uh, but now it's time to head back to the airport where I'll catch a Frontier flight. This is the second uh, in this series uh, I've been uh, trying out America's ultra low cost carriers. So uh, today I'm flying from here in Austin to New Orleans with Frontier. Uh, from there I'll pick up a Spirit flight into Atlanta. So I'm checking them all out. I hope you will subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss these, this, this really interesting series of videos. But for now it's time to head back to the airport where I'll pick up that Frontier flight. Let's get going. Frontier's booking process was straightforward. The base fare was, in fact, 93 cents. Yes, that's less than $1, but don't get too excited. I paid an additional $33.37 in government taxes and mandatory airline fees. I also chose to pay $12 for an assigned seat and $35 to carry an extra bag on board. So Frontier really reeled me in with a fare of less than a dollar that pretty quickly turned into $81.30 for a flight from Austin to New Orleans. Frontier and Allegiant use Austin's smaller South Terminal. There's a shuttle running between here and the main one, but they're spread pretty far apart. Several passengers on my flight had gone to the wrong place, despite many emails and reminders from Frontier. The South Terminal is cool. Sure, there's a, a small bodega inside offering food and drinks, but there's also a really great patio with a food truck. Now, this terminal has been around for a couple of years, but I lucked out and arrived there on the first day they'd installed cooling misters on their outdoor fans. It made a big difference under that Texas heat. The patio also offered somewhat obscured views of the ramp action. I couldn't have been happier with my food truck tacos, and my happiness factor rose even higher when I saw that my flight was on time. Boarding from the South Terminal was incredible. As an aviation enthusiast, it's always a thrill to board via stairs. And it was even better this time. Since my seat was at the back of the plane, I was directed to board at the rear of the aircraft, which meant a walk along the entire length of the two-year-old Airbus A320. If I'd paid for that carry-on bag at the airport, by the way, it would have cost $50 instead of the $35 I paid in advance. My seat, 30F, offered a microscopic 28 inches of pitch and 18 inches of width. It was tight. Frankly, I found the tray table to be laughable. If you're a business traveler looking to get some work done, count on booking another airline. There's not even room for a notepad, let alone a laptop. There was room for my overstuffed briefcase. Thankfully, I had my Kindle, so I didn't really need much space. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Always bring your own in-flight entertainment when you're traveling. Whereas my Allegiant flight was perfumed with the smell of fast food, this time I was overwhelmed by the strong and inescapable stench of body odor. It was not me. I checked. As I breathed through my mouth, I began to notice the buildup of weather to the west. Summer storms are the great equalizer. It doesn't matter how much you paid for your seat or what airline you chose. If the weather rolls in, you aren't going anywhere. As a result, I paid particular attention to the radar and the speed with which the checked bags were being loaded. Thanks to a great ground crew, we got out without a hitch, which is more than I can say for the Southwest flight that was also flying from Austin to New Orleans. Unfortunately, passengers on that flight were delayed due to the weather. Each passenger has access to a light, an air vent, and a flight attendant call button in the PSU, or Passenger Service Unit. I used a little strategy to increase my chances at having a row to myself. I'll share it in the wrap-up video for this series. Fortunately, as on Allegiant, it also worked on this flight. 
Unfortunately, some of my fellow passengers seemed to think the armrest was a sort of lounge chair while waiting for the lavatory. Frontier, like the other airlines in this series, offers a basic buy on board program. The tiny seats are hard on the menus. I'd heard Frontier flight attendants request a tip, so I was sure to order some food to find out for myself. And the rumors are true. Here's how it works. You place your order, they swipe your credit card on a tablet, return the device to you, and then you can select the amount of tip you want to give. To be fair, nobody asked me for one directly, but regardless, this practice is unique among air carriers as far as I'm aware. In fact, on most airlines, flight attendants are forbidden from taking cash tips. In the end, I left one, but there's something strange about tipping people who are responsible for your safety, like flight attendants. Passing labor costs on to customers is one low-cost strategy, but what do you think? Would you tip a flight attendant in this scenario? Leave me a comment, let me know. Overall, this was a fine flight. Not only was this the cheapest base airfare I've ever paid, now admittedly that was an accounting trick that made it happen. But it was also the smallest seat I've ever flown in, and I guess that was an engineering trick. Anyway, to be fair, Frontier equips planes on longer flights with larger seats. Be sure to stay tuned to see how Spirit fares, and also for my final judgments in a comparison video of my experiences with Allegiant, Frontier, and Spirit. If you liked the video, please click the thumbs up button, leave me a comment, and between now and the next time, see you in the sky.